How many times have you wondered, does my one life make a difference in the world? Do I have the potential to accomplish great things? Come with us on this journey, exploring interconnections through science and across cultures and time, noticing how your life impacts people, places, and events around the world, whether or not you're there to see the results. Nothing exists in isolation. Your smallest act can have a ripple effect far beyond what you can imagine. We are a part of something much greater than ourselves. Welcome to the Connectivity Project. They're supposed to be right next to the fence, right? Then they don't get mowed. There you go, butterflies, live. When I moved to Iowa, I sort of discovered the prairie. <laughs> I was asking myself, what do people do in Iowa? I wanted to see that landscape that I found so intriguing. And enter Ragbri, which is a bike ride across the entire state. 20,000 people from all over the world descend on Iowa and ride their bike in this mass migration across the state. So I signed up. My roommate and best friend, we were riding together and just sort of were brainstorming what can we do while we're riding. Nature matters to us, this landscape matters to us. I've sort of always uh, been into monarch butterflies. Maybe we can plant things for the monarchs as we ride. Pollination is a dance between the plant and animal kingdoms and provides a view into the world of interconnectivity. Hello, this is Juliana. I'm speaking from Sao Paulo, Brazil, and it's such a pleasure to be here. Hi, I'm Katie James, and this is my sixth grade class. We're from Greenlight Public School, and we're excited to be a part of this. Thank you. Um, and I have my six-year-old daughter Marina here with us to learn um, and to hear our discussions. And I would like to share my screen a little bit to show you um, a few things that I prepared here. So my name is Juliana, as I said, and I'm a biologist with master's and PhD in genetics. Uh, and I'm currently responsible for the uh, Freeland Brazil office. I'm trying to... It's not moving here. Um, so here is all, are all the places where free land is located. So we are in pretty much every region. And here you see the Sao Paulo Brazil office. And this is just to show where you guys are located and where I am located. And it's now a little bit past 1 p.m. So we already had lunch. Um, and I know you guys are you're probably around um, 11. So we are a little bit far away. So Brazil is a very big country. And as you can see, these are all the biomes. Uh, we are not just the Amazon forest. We also have the semi-arid, the savanna-like, the wetlands, the Atlantic forest. And this part is roughly where I am located now. So um, at Freeland Brazil, we work uh, to protect biodiversity from those exploiting it in a harmful way. We aim at keeping them free in their natural environments rather than locked up uh, to fulfill consumer markets that buy illegal animals. And we do that in working in different ways. One of these ways is carrying out awareness and education campaigns uh, media outreach, work with teachers, uh, work with uh, lectures, classes, schools, uh, little kids, big kids, small kids, mid-sized kids, um, all sorts of <laughs> the public. But we also work to support the governmental agencies working to combat uh, wildlife crime, wildlife trafficking through the development of tools, development of um, uh, papers, uh, reports, 
we are now starting the development of an application required by governmental agencies and we even helped to edit a book and lastly we work with laws and politicians because ultimately the the best tools that we have to combat crimes are the laws so we work with legislators in brazil we work with international agreements in south america all to strengthen the laws that we have at hand to combat this uh, crime. But what all of this that we do at Freeland Brazil has to do with monarch butterflies. So here I'm going to stop sharing for a moment so we can talk. And then I have a few more slides to show you. So what do you think that the work of Freeland Brazil, uh, conserving animals in the wild has to do with the monarch, monarch butterflies that you just watched? Anybody Any ideas? Any ideas? Anybody Don't be afraid. Looks weird, right? Looks absolutely disconnected, correct? So, can I go back? So let's share my screen once again, if I may. Uh, right here. Okay, so it has everything to do. First and foremost, because we are talking about wild species. Did you know that the butterflies are wild species? Such as these birds up here and not domestic species such as these ones down here. And the difference is that domestic species have been artificially selected by humans for many, many, many generations for specific traits. And they now depend on humans to live and they are different from their wild uh, parental species, the ones which they originated from. This means that domestic species do not have a place in the wild anymore. While wild species have ecological functions, they have a job to do in nature. So this is me as a kid, so you can see I love uh, animals, but the domestic species such as dogs and cats and, and chickens they're meant, uh, they're the ones we think of as pets or um, for those of you uh, who consume for uh, the cattle industry, etc. But these butterflies, the monarch butterflies that you just watched and the work of Freeland Brazil also shows that all life in a planet has some sort of interconnection. Um, they show that uh, this, these interactions between living beings can be described, for example, in this thing that you are looking at. This is an ecological web. Each node of this, depending on the web, represents either an individual or a species or a group of species. And uh, they, they, they display different kinds of interactions with other nodes. So you see, when you affect one or two or more nodes of these webs, uh, these systems end up displaying cascade effects. And these interactions, they're not uniform. There are more interactions among some species and, other, and, and less between others. There is competition, there is predation, all sorts of interactions. So for example, pollination, such as the, as you saw in the butterfly, uh, the monarch butterfly uh, film, or seed dispersal, which helps forests to regenerate. Or even predation on seeds, which also helps to maintain the balance of which plants grow in each ecosystem. Or predation on insects and other species, which may become pests uh, in crops in case of population uh, increases. And of course, the reproduction uh, to form the following generations of wild animals. Therefore, withdrawing animals from the, from the wild uh, with no control causes several impacts, uh, which can range from very subtle ones, oh, a couple of birds are missing from that forest, or harsher ones, such as, for example, impacts in the regeneration of forests, which in extreme cases can even affect the maintenance of services such as crop pollination, soil stability, and maintenance of water sources. We are now going through what scientists call the sixth mass extinction, 
a great loss of species caused mainly as a result of human actions. The way we consume and live is causing a severe dramatic climate change with more extreme events becoming more common, such as fire here at your home in the West Coast, or a dramatic and uncontrolled fire happening as we speak right now at this moment at the Brazilian wetlands, Pantanal, one of the homes of the Jaguar. Extreme floods, among other extreme climatic events. So although the loss of animals is not the main driver of climate change, um, loss of animals is a relevant component of the regeneration of forests and their ability to store carbon. But there is still time. Don't be sad. Don't, be, don't, don't let your heads uh, hold down. We have time. We can change. If we become aware of this deep interconnection of all living things and the environment, and our role, uh, and the role of anim wild animals in the wild and forests and other natural habitats, uh, the importance of changing our habits, uh, the task's huge, but we can do it. You can do small steps, such as encouraging your community to plant bee and bird friendly gardens. Uh, we have to be aware and ask our, the companies and business and legislators that they protect natural environments. Don't buy uh, things that you are not sure about where they were taken from. Your uh, wood supplier, where are they taking wood from? Let animals be wild and fulfill their functions as individuals and evolve as species. Let's rethink our desire to own and use wildlife, wild species. Why do we need to possess something or use something from wild species? And let's change the way we consume, the way we use cars, the way we fly airplanes, the way we use heating and, and cooling in our homes all the time. So each one of us is important. Each one of us can take actions that can change things and can make sure that your future is not uh, a catastrophe, but a beautiful life uh, in a sustainable world. So we have time. We can do it, and even the smaller actions count. So this is what I'm here to show you and to show the connection of uh, but monarch butterflies in the US and some Brazilian birds. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this actually comes at a perfect time in our sixth grade classroom because as an IB school, the sixth grade year is where we take on an exhibition program and it's a discovery. The kids decide on a world problem that they would like to investigate and through watching this and hearing from you and watching Plants Have Wings by Rose Madrone, we, it just solidifies the fact that we need to be agents of change. And whether you're in sixth grade or you're 75 years old, you can make a difference. Yes, and it's very exciting to see this new generation and to make sure that you guys understand that you have both power and responsibility in your hands. You know, I don't know if you ever heard of something called the market economy, but it's the economy we live in, in which we, we buy things and business sell them. Um, we have such a big power when we choose what we buy and from who we buy. It's your money supporting what they are doing. Um, and with this power comes this great responsibility. And you know what? You guys are not passive. You're not watching a movie. It's your lives. It's your futures. So uh, once you understand that all life is connected, everything is a web of interactions and effects can be of a cascade effect. That, that, um, after, that, that is, is true as well for the good acts. When you take a stand, when you make a choice, when you talk to someone to raise awareness, this also has a cascade effect. So if you plant a garden that it's butterfly fly friendly, then you're going to attract bees as well. And then you may attract birds as well. And then you're going to attract predators of butterflies and of um, caterpillars. And you're going to make a big change, even if it doesn't look like. So the cascade effects can be negative, but the positive ones are also cascade effects. So I think it's just, you know, let's get to work everybody together 
and take care of this future. So. Yeah, we do have a couple questions for you, if that's okay, from students who would like to ask. Sure. The first. Let's start with them a second. Um, what is the main problem that you are trying to fix and why is it so important to you? Okay, do you guys have three and a half hours? Because I can go <laughs> on and on about this. Um, I don't know if you saw my pictures as a kid, but I was born with this gene of loving animals. I just, I'm, I love animals since I understand myself as a person. And then I have always wanted to be close to nature and I understood the importance of protecting nature and the environment and protecting animals. And then I learned about the difference between wild species and domestic species. And then I learned about the importance of wild species in the wild. And then I learned about everything that is going on, climate change and deforestation. But I was a scientist, uh, I was a biologist and I did research. And one day I was just typing my computer and I came across the coolest place on earth, which is right there in the United States in a city called Ashland, Oregon. They have a wildlife forensics laboratory. They are scientists and they do wildlife forensics. They only investigate crimes uh, involving wild species. And I thought that was the coolest thing ever. And I got involved, I became a volunteer and then a visiting scientist and I learned about wildlife trafficking. And then I came back home to Brazil and I learned about wildlife trafficking in Brazil and why would people just take millions of animals out of the wild, steal them from nature, from their chicks, from their parents, put them in small boxes, cramped and make them suffer and get hurt and get dehydrated and sometimes die just so that some people could buy them and stick them in cages. And then I learned that this was a huge thing and all over Brazil and Asia and other places, people are buying wildlife that is illegally stolen from nature. And I learned about the huge impacts, the cascade impacts that this has in nature. And it's just something that moves my heart, both uh, for the well-being of the animals as well as uh, for the conservation of biodiversity and for the future of humanity and of kids like you guys or my, my daughter. So it's something that I'm happy to do some work-related tasks uh, on a Friday 11 p.m. to the despair of my husband, but it's just something I'm passionate about. I think it's important and people need to be aware and I think I can make my small piece of difference here. Questions? Yeah, Any other question? Sure. For sure. Um, how can uh, us kids make a difference? Uh, how us kids can make it? How can us kids make a difference? You make all the difference. You are the most important ones. You're the future, and now you're the present. You are. You, you know, like Greta, you guys are actors. You have to take the responsibility. Us grown-ups, we're not doing such a good jobs. You guys can demand action. You guys can ask your parents to vote for people who are worried about the environment. You guys can, you know, make demonstrations, write blogs, make polls or protests at your school. And you guys can ask your parents. Maybe you can plant a tiny garden that will attract butterflies. Or maybe you can ask your dads to talk to the community, dads and moms to talk to the community. Or plant a garden at, at your school. <laughs> now I'm finding, uh, making a problem to the school, but make, maybe plant a garden. Or talk to, get a, a small committee of kids and talk to the mayor, talk to the community centers. Say, can we plant on the roadsides? Can we plant plants that will attract birds and butterflies? Or as you grow up, be aware. Be aware that this is real. There is a consensus among scientists and it's not a joke. It's your future. We are gonna be old people already dying when this gets worse. You guys are gonna be here. So make sure you understand, get informed, talk about it. Uh, make sure you know, think about, you know, I, I like to consume, I like to buy stuff, 
but every time we go buy something, do I really need this? Is this produced uh, with something that was taken from nature? It's a natural resource. This has an impact. It was uh, produced on the other side of the world. Uh, it needed a ship or an airplane to be sent here. Do I need to consume all that? Do I need all those clothes? Do I need the AC on right now? Do I need the heating on right now? Think about all of your choices. Think about when you throw food at your garbage. We have to be aware you guys are actors. If all of the young people change their habits, we will be able to accomplish what we need to accomplish. But we need you guys. You have all the power in the world. Just be aware of that. Sure. How did you find out about Freeland? So this is a good one. I was um, developing research at the coolest place on Earth, the Ashland uh, Wildlife Forensics Lab. It belongs to the US Fish and Wildlife uh, Services. And I have three main masters there. The director, Ken Goddard, the deputy director, Ed Espinoza, and my advisor, Mary Curtis. And Ed Espinoza, who is probably one of the smartest people on Earth, told me about Freeland and he showed me the work Freeland was developing on Southeast Asia and how they were based on technical expertise and also on action because you know what I really like about Freeland's work is that they work with governments for a solution. How can we collaborate? We don't just point our fingers to what's wrong. We try to come up with solutions and, and we try to develop things that may make a difference. And I reached out to them and I said, I want to work with you. And they're like, what? And I said, yes, I want to work with you. And then they said, we don't have a, a Brazil office. And I said, now you do. And, and I've been working for Freelance since 2011. Anybody else? Sure. Any other questions? Maya or Jaden? Either one. Jaden? Take it. Yep. What's, what's the most prosecuted animal in USA? I'm not sure what the most trafficked animal in the USA is. I do know that there is a big illegal market of ornamental fish, uh, reptiles and reptile skins, uh, reptiles for pets and reptile skin as well. A lot of leather of a bony fish called Pirarucu from the Amazon and probably several birds. But I would say that most likely a reptiles and ornamental fish. But this is just something that I, I think. I, I don't have data here on my hands to answer that. One other one, yes. Yep. Hold on a second. Take a minute, Yeah. What goals did you make when you were younger to get to where you are today? Uh, one more time. What goals did you make when you were younger to uh, get where you are today? My goals, well, I am, um, my father and mother always uh, supported my choices and they said that above all I had to be happy. Uh, so my father always said, follow your heart. And uh, this is why I don't work, but I develop a mission. Um, and it's, um, it's funny, of course it was not seriously serious, but when I was a little bit older and I was already in biology school, I told myself I wanted to save the world, but not for a personal fulfillment, but rather I really love nature and wanted to do something applied and wanted to feel that I am doing something good with my actions. For me personally, it would be difficult just to work for profit or for a company's profit. I need to feel that I'm doing something for the greater good. I believe in community. I believe that we are all brothers and sisters. I believe that we are all connected, humans and non-humans. And I think that these were my main goals, work for nature and be happy. What is the most trafficked animal in Brazil? There are so many. Uh, wildlife trafficking is difficult because there are so many different consumer markets. Um, so for the domestic consumer market, the national within Brazil, it's for sure um, songbirds and parrots. 
they are illegally traded by the thousands, perhaps millions. People just love to keep them in their homes, have them sing in cages, but they all buy those which were stolen from nature. Now we have a booming exotic trade consumer, exotic um, reptile consumer market. And we do have a very strong um, problem of wildlife trafficking to other countries such as the US, Europe and Asia. Uh, so I can cite shark fin to Asia, reptiles to Asia, uh, sea cucumbers, seahorses. You would not believe what people, will, people are capable of. And right now, jaguars, jaguars parts and their teeth and their bones are being sent to Asia and ornamental fish to the US and birds and, and, and eggs of birds to Europe. So Brazil, I don't know if you know that, but Brazil has been considered the most mega diverse country in the world. And this mega diversity is a very specific way of, of listing the countries. And this mega biodiversity attracts all sorts of people trying to exploit it, even though I think that all these people are aware that if we continue in the short time, there will be nothing left. But you would not believe what people are capable of um, for money. What was your favorite project to do for Freeland? All of them. <laughs> I love what I do, um, and I think that each one, I, and it's true, it's really true. Uh, for example, I get to, to speak with ambassadors and legislators, and I love it because I feel I'm making a difference when I work with federal judges and write a piece on how to apply the current legislation to our life trafficking. But at the same time, when I help 11 year old with their science project and they get to present it to their colleagues, that is as exciting or even more. And I get to work with police officers and agents and federal police and people on the ground. And um, each line of work is necessary and each line of work is uh, amazing. But I have to be honest that um, my favorite ones are the ones that I either get to be in contact with kids because um, I think you guys are the future indeed and, and the only ways we can change anything but also when I get to be in contact with nature or animals or even a lab, I miss this hands-on thing, so. How do you balance your free time and your work time? What's free time? <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, um, I, um, I, I do have a life. I'm married. I have a kid. I, I, I practice yoga. I love to swim. I used to swim competitively. And it's hard. Um, I had to learn because I have such a big passion from, for what I do. And there is so much work to be done that at a given moment, we just have to make the choice. Uh, after this, I'm not taking any calls which are not urgent. I'm not answering any emails which are not urgent. Sometimes you will have to take a call. Sometimes you have a deadline, you have to pull all-nighters. But I think that it's a, an exercise that I have to develop every day with my family. And at one point, um, I realized that I was looking more to a cell phone than to my kid or to my husband. And I was not living the present. So I do make this choice. Sometimes I see a call or an email which is not, does not require my immediate attention. Uh, in a weekend or at nighttime, I make sure I'm always there to put my kid to bed, to prepare her dinner, to read a story. I'm always there for her school meetings. And on these moments, I simply turn off and I will not answer anything because uh, life on earth is important, but my family is as important to me, so. Also, um, I just have to make sure that we understand that we need to be healthy. I'm sorry, just we need to be healthy and happy in order to have energy to change things. So we need to practice sports. We need to make sure our minds are, are focused. There is no good in pulling all nighters and then becoming a, a, a person which is a zombie. So make sure you guys eat healthy and practice sports and you guys are strong enough so you guys can change the world. 
Where did you go to school? I went to school in Sao Paulo, Brazil. I attended a couple of different schools and I studied biology in a university called University of Sao Paulo, which uh, belongs to the state of Sao Paulo. And it's a very, very good university. So I feel very fortunate. How do you work with law enforcement? Repeated. Oh, how do you I, I understood that, yeah. Um, <laughs> what is the work like? Um, so I am fortunate to be in contact and have colleagues and friends and professional focal points in different law enforcement agents. And they are excellent, amazing people. They're such amazing people doing uh, public service right now. So the way I work with them varies a little bit, but in, in short, uh, I pass a uh, freelance Brazil. We pass lots of information to them. We receive lots of information from people who are not um, willing to talk directly to law enforcement. We also uh, try to provide data, analyze data, provide reports, uh, provide tools. So we are developing an app right now to try to streamline their work during seizures. Also, I, what I try to do is as an NGO, get their perception on where are the gaps and what's needed so that we can offer something that it's useful and we are not wasting people's times and money. So right now at Freeland Brazil, uh, after this careful analysis of their perceived gaps and needs, we are adapting to Brazil two training programs on um, uh, detection of wildlife trafficking in airports, as well as um, a training program developed by Freeland which is called Counter Transnational Organized Crime. So uh, we will provide tools and capacity and training and manuals, and we will train instructors so that they can repeat these trainings and use these capabilities. Uh, we are also putting together a short identification manual uh, for agents in airports to identify some species uh, quicker and in an easier way. So we collaborate in several ways. Uh, one agency even asked us to prepare a training program for all of the, their new incoming agents. So it's a very rewarding work. I feel that I'm making a difference. They feel they have support from the civil society and it's working out beautifully. Have you ever been to America? Have, have you, you ever been to America? Antarctica? No. America. America. Oh, yes, I have. So I was a volunteer at the Fish and Wildlife, uh, Wildlife Forensics Lab from 05 until I think uh, 2008. And then after that, until 2013, I was a visiting scientist every year. I also volunteered for a place called Wildlife Images in Grants Pass, Oregon. I did get a prize in New York from the Wings World Quest. Uh, organization. I was a National Geographic Emerging Explorer, so I made it to Washington and Miami for uh, um, presenting National Geographic talks a couple of times. And of course, I went to Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know what? I was in Green Lake a couple of years ago for the first Freeland Film Festival, which was very exciting and I loved it. And I stayed in the best uh, hotel bed and bed and breakfast ever, which I can't remember the name, but it was adorable. And I had such a great time in Green Lake. How much of a risk is it being against animal trafficking? Um, it is risky. And before I worked with Freeland, I was a volunteer at an organization called SOS Fauna. And SOS Fauna, I, I stayed with them for six years and they do a lot of on the ground work with the police in raids. And then it's a little bit more risky because the bad guys are seeing your face. Um, I have been a little bit in moments in which I felt a little bit scared, but on the other hand, nothing never happened uh, to me. Uh, but I do know, for example, that I was in a meeting and I do know there was a guy connected to wildlife traffickers and I saw them uh, taking a picture of my face. So sometimes um, 
I feel, I do feel that I'm being observed. And the biggest problem is when you feel that being against wildlife trafficking pro and, and pro-environmental conservation, it's not just against the big guys, but also against the status quo and maybe um, people who are powerful in the government. Um, so it can be risky, but I have never had any real problems. Do you ever think about how amazing it is that you're trying to change the world? Um, from one side, I have to be very humble and, and understand that I'm just a drop in the ocean. But from the other side, I do feel happy that every morning I jump out of bed and I, I do a job that I love and putting energy and time into something that I feel is worth it. And it's for the greater good. It's not just for me or for my company. Um, I feel really good about it. I feel that it's worth it. I feel that um, it's something when when I talk to kids, I, there can be 20 kids in the room, but one has the shiny eyes and I know that they got the message. I know I made a tiny difference. It's really re rewarding and I love to work for the good of the collective, the planetary collective, no matter, you know, what language you speak or the color of your face or of your hair, uh, it feels good. Thank you so much for allowing us to be a part of the Freeland Film Festival and the Cast Sticker Library joining you live. Um, we will keep you informed of all the change that we're making here in Green Lake. Thanks. That's Guys. beautiful. Thank you so much for having me and keep on the great work and I'll let you know um, on the following film festival, I may come to Green Lake, so I want to meet all of you in person. <laughs> Sounds great. Thanks. You take care. You too. Thank you. Bye.